Have you ever found yourself playing any sort of GTA game, causing all sorts of mayhem and then just wondering to yourself, you know, this is fun and all, but wouldn't it be great if I could just whip out my Johnson and start pissing on everyone? Now, if you're a sane individual, you just say, what the fuck, no, who'd want to do that? But if you're a complete fucking lunatic like me, I know you just want to unzip and unleash a golden shower. And luckily for you, a small little game known as Postal 2 has got you covered. Developed by an Arizona-based company known as Running With Scissors, Postal 2 is a rather interesting take on open-world criminal sandbox games like the aforementioned GTA, and it's interesting in the sense that it takes aspects of those games like the humor and giving the player the freedom to just tear shit up in an urban environment and crank it to the max. But unlike GTA, Postal 2's story takes a huge backseat, which isn't to say it's a bad thing because even though it's really simple, it's ridiculous enough that it fits in with the game. You basically play as the friendly neighborhood sociopath known as the Postal Dude, and you just go around doing his daily errands. Yes, I know it sounds exhilarating, but they do become absurd every day, and it's the way the game sets all of this up that makes something as basic as getting some milk fun. Because you can do all of these chores in whatever order you'd like, and there's about a dozen ways you could approach each of them. Like for example, on Tuesday, one of your tasks is to go to the mall and meet up with THE Gary Coleman so you can get a signed copy of his autobiography. But before you can get to him, the game presents you with a long ass line that if you really wanted to, you could just wait until you get to him, but you're probably having an assault rifle with a metric ass ton of bullets just waiting to be unloaded, so you could just mow everyone down including Gary and just steal his autobiography. All the errands also end in complete chaos no matter how you approach them. Like if you decide not to kill Gary, the cops will arrive and try and arrest him, which is just them shooting at him. It might sound a little unfair for a passive storm since all the missions usually ended a giant shootout and you can't exactly fight back, but it does sort of add a... A balanced risk to both approaches. What's great though is if you look hard enough, you might just find a hidden route that takes you away from the shitfest you've started. And what's even better is that the game oftentimes rewards you quite handsomely for finding these routes or spots. And really, that's not the only time the game rewards you for exploring the map. Now, if you go out of your way to break into every house in the neighborhood, you'd probably leave stacked with the bare essentials, plus maybe a few weapons that you weren't supposed to get so early on. Also, pro tip, if you go into a building and there isn't a whole lot, come back to it the next day and there might just be a surprise waiting for you. Item spawns change each day and it makes exploring the map incredibly addicting and something you absolutely have to do if you want to be able to progress smoothly throughout the rest of the game. And honestly, in this day and age of open world games where the maps are enormous with barely any sort of interesting landmarks, it's really nice to visit Postal 2 every so often and enjoy a really small map that's sectioned off with multiple level transitions, but it has like 7 billion different places you could visit that actually serve somewhat of a gameplay purpose, and just to stock you up with weapons, armor, healing, etc, etc. However, I will say that the huge lack of ambience or music is very off-putting. Like really the only things you'll be listening to as you're walking through town are the NPCs talking to each other, plus the dude talking to himself, don't worry I'll get to him in a bit, and what sounds like an old fucking air conditioner constantly running. And the only time you'll hear music is if you visit certain places or open up your map and hear this smooth jingle. But other than that, the lack of ambience makes what is a very cramped town feel kind of barren and empty. Luckily for us though, Postal Dude adds most of the charm to not only the map but the entirety of the game itself. With almost everything you could do, Postal Dude has a funny quip for it, depending on your taste and humor. The jokes on Postal 2 are usually very low-brow dark humor, very akin to the stuff you'd hear or see on South Park which I find to be funny. And I think it fits in with this character and the game's overall vibe. However, I get that some people won't really get a kick out of it, which kind of makes it hard for me to recommend it since the game's humor is almost like its selling point, and if you don't enjoy it then you'll probably just end up being really annoyed for the majority of your playthrough. Now you're probably thinking that I really enjoy Postal 2, like to the point where I've barely said anything bad about it, and it's been nothing but praises, and well, you're almost correct. As what as Postal 2 is, it's got some flaws, one of which being the really poor performance on modern machines and the incredibly dated look of Unreal Engine 2. But another one you might notice as you're taking cutting through lines to a whole new level is the fact that it's taking you around 2 to 3 hits to kill a civilian with a SPAS 12 shotgun. This could partially be because of game balance, since the SPAS 12 is one of the first weapons you get and ammo for it isn't very hard to come across, but it might also be because the damage system in this game is pretty bad. Once you pick up a gun, you might notice just how underpowered and unsatisfying most of them are. A majority of them lack recoil, which makes a lot of their hits seem so much less impactful, and guns like the machine gun stay almost completely stiff while you're firing it, which just makes it seem like it's shooting rubber pellets. And the shotgun I mentioned earlier, even though it has recoil, it just feels so off. Like I feel like something that looks this fucking bulky should instantly turn a civilian into gyps if I'm close enough to smell their fucking breath, but it's just not the case unless if I have the barrel shoved right into their cranium. And all of this is a real damn shame for a game that lets you be a rampaging psychopath. But if you thought that sounded bad, let me introduce you to Apocalypse Weekend. Hmm, normally I'd expect a fancy cinematic to explain such a crucial story element. The font is nice though. Originally released as an expansion two years after the game's release, which I believe was sold separately and was later included in things like Postal Fudge Pack and Postal X, but do not quote me on that, I'm not entirely sure and I couldn't really get a straight answer from Google. 
Apocalypse Weekend, as you might have guessed, adds a weekend missions to Postal 2, which sounds fun until you realize the open world is replaced with whatever the fuck this is. Honestly, I wouldn't even consider it a town. And the fun chores you got to do earlier are now replaced with actual mind-numbing chores. You're not washing dishes, no, that'd be too much fun. Instead you're killing 20 zombies, which doesn't sound too bad, but then you have to do the same thing right after, except you're killing 20 zombie cows. And the game almost makes you do it again, except that gets cut out due to- I told you no! What the hell do you think this is? Friggin' bullshit. What do you got, Steve? Hold Man, on, hold on! Proposal what do you for the pigeon mission. Proposal for the pigeon mission? We, we ain't got no budget for pigeon missions! The fuck, are you kidding me? Vince, the kids. You gotta think of the kids. Look at the quality of this video! You want my... No! no. Hold on, I said! Who, what, who is this? You, the, get on fucking line! You want money, too! You! Fuck you, too! We don't get too comfortable, because at the start of the next day you're up killing zombies, but this time it's fucking 50 of them. And that's not all, because right after you have to kill 20 elephants. That's four missions where you have to kill a certain amount of something with no player freedom besides choosing what weapon you want to use. I appreciate RWS wanting to stick to the absurd nature of normal Postal 2 missions, but the absurdity of them wasn't the only thing that made them great. Having to do these incredibly linear missions one after another becomes so repetitive to the point where I just start losing brain cells, and once I'm done with them the remaining six missions can't even make up for how bad Apocalypse Weekend starts. Most of the last couple of missions are you just shooting through a bunch of enemies in four different locations. You start off in a terrorist camp, then you're at the military base, and then you're at the office building of RWS's fictional publisher interactive to drop off a nuclear bomb they picked up from the terrorist camp and then you're finally at an animal shelter because you need to rescue postal dude's dog from getting euthanized Again, these missions aren't great. You're still doing the same thing for pretty much all of them, and it doesn't help that these missions drag on for so long that by the time you reach the military base, you're most likely going to feel burnt out. Thankfully, the last mission of Apocalypse Weekend is a boss fight where you have to fight Mike J, an actual employee of RWS who got infected with mad cow disease and became a giant demon lord. If normal Postal 2 ended like this, I'd say it'd probably be a perfect game. This boss fight not only nails the absurd nature of the rest of the game, but also doesn't feel nearly as repetitive as the rest of Apocalypse Weekend. It's not even that hard of a boss, but honestly, I'll take anything over having to smash a million zombie skulls with a baseball bat. All you have to do is shoot the flying Gary Coleman heads to get rid of his force field, and then start pelting him with bullets or rockets. Rinse and repeat a few more times, and congrats, you've officially beat Postal 2, and you've been given a psychiatric evaluation just to show you how batshit insane you really are. As bad as Postal 2's flaws are, I still highly recommend you go check it out. I'm not going to say Postal 2 is heaps better than any GTA game, because both of these games have their own strengths and weaknesses. But if you're looking for a game where you could just start some mindless havoc and for whatever reason you can't get GTA, Bustle 2 is a really good alternative. It really gives you all the right tools and weapons for you to go absolutely ape shit. Even though I gave most of the guns a bad rep, I haven't even mentioned some of the crazier shit you could do, like using a stray cat as a makeshift suppressor, or using this rotting cow head to get everyone in town sick. Honestly, it's a really pleasant thing to see. And even though it's a little janky, it's super entertaining just to play through the absurdity of it all. Puzzle 2 does a really good job of going against what the standard is for games like this. No longer are you playing through an epic cinematic story of the main character going through his or her struggles, and instead you're just doing really simple chores that all seem to stack up to a really convoluted story. Postal 2 doesn't go out of its way to be really immersive and realistic, and instead just goes out of its way to be as politically incorrect, crude, and lowbrow as humanly possible. Combine all of this together and got something that's completely unmarketable. But Postal 2 don't give a shit, and that's why it's fucking fun!